Hi, I am Maria Burada and I am a middle child. Many people believe that we are wallflowers or unlucky because of our birth order, but I have always wondered if that is actually true. Do siblings influence us that much? Growing up, I was always jealous of Anna, my older sister, because in my eyes, she was the prettiest, the smartest. She seemed to know how the world was working and how to conquer it one step at a time. I would always compare myself to her because she was this amazing person and I wanted to be like her. But there was no point in comparing because we were fundamentally different because of our age gap and so many other things. But how did my sister influence me differently than your sister influenced you? Susan McHale, a distinguished professor of human development at Penn State, stated that siblings can influence one another by comparing ways their parents treat them. They see what kind of privileges, discipline, attention, and time their mothers and fathers dedicate to them relative to their brothers and sisters. Fast forward to kindergarten, I started making more friends. And they would come over and we would play for hours on end. And even if their parents would come to take them home, we would hide under the bed or the dining room table just to spend some more time together and delay the departure. After a while, I started wondering what if I had a playmate, 24-7, someone that would live with me so that we would never have to leave each other. And naturally, I thought about having a sibling. Of course, I had Anna, but the age gap was speaking for itself. She had more important things to do than play with me. She had studying to do, hanging out with her friends, and so, so much more. So, I talked it over with my parents, and after a while, there she was. My little sister called Miruna. I was so excited, but I realized that she didn't know how to talk, she didn't know how to play with toys, she couldn't even sit straight. So I I didn't know how to react. I found myself in one of those expectations versus reality kind of YouTube videos because I expected her to be exactly like me without thinking it through and realizing that she had some growing up to do before she ended up like me. So I found myself being jealous again because mom was dedicating all this time trying to take care of Miruna and make sure that she has all that she needed so that she can develop as she should. Now Susan McHale said that children can feel jealous if their siblings are getting more privileged treatment. McHale explains that, on the other hand, if they see their sibling getting more discipline, they might begin to develop a sense that they are the good kid in the family. Even if they see their siblings getting more attention for sports or academic achievements, they may, might believe themselves to be unathletic or the dumb kid, even though they are actually as good as other kids their own age in those areas. Once she started growing up, she started copying me a bit. Um, and I found myself to be quite annoyed at first because I haven't experienced that before. But after a while, I actually started growing as a person and developing other qualities that I didn't know I had because I wanted to be a good role model for her. Susan McHale stated that siblings copy each other too. They interact, reinforce behavior, serve as models, and introduce each other to experiences. For example, older siblings can be a conduit to adolescent culture. After a while, she got into primary school and she had all this access to technology. She even received a phone. So our whole entire lives are built in a phone, in a piece of metal. Our photos, video, social media, everything you could ever think of, you could probably touch it on your screen and find it. So that was great and she was really grateful, but she was more prone to cyberbullying and she was um, always receiving this misinformation that is, spread by, that is spread by mass media and so on and so forth. So after a while, she started asking me things like, Maria, why do Black Lives Matter? What is feminism? What is LGBT? And so much more. And I was baffled for a second. I didn't know, I didn't know what sh should I tell her? Should I, should I just brush it off? Tell her that we shall discuss this when she gets older, that it's not a big deal. Just brush it off. Or should I tell her, educate her on these topics? But the thing is that she was raised in this bubble um, that was made out of her privilege and I didn't know if it was my place to just pop it and start this discussion when she was nine years old. According to the Encyclopedia of Early Childhood, 
the sibling relationship is likely to last longer than any other relationship in one's lifetime. So because of that, I thought, well, I'm going to have her probably always by my side. So I might just as well try to make her the best person that she can be to teach her how to be kind and to defend someone if she sees injustice is being served. But also never be afraid to be wrong and learn. And so I tried to the best of my abilities to answer all of her questions because by some happenstance she decided to ask me and not her friends or my parents. And I wanted to be a good um, role model. And in Hannah Montana's words, even if you make um, everybody makes mistakes, everybody has those days. So even if you fail, um, there is still a chance that you might end up a good person because you can learn from those mistakes. Now, until unbiased information regarding all of these things, racism, uh, homophobia, xenophobia, and so on and so forth, may be accessible even to children in a, told in a manner that they would understand, maybe a better generation will rise up. But until then, it's important that we do our part. So, in 1964, Alfred Adler developed a theory on the importance of birth order on personality development. He said that middle child syndrome is the belief that middle children are the most unlucky out of their family, turning out to be excluded or ignored. For most of my childhood, I have never been known as the extrovert. I have always been um, quite an introverted person, obviously, um, the peacemaker trying to make things um, better for everyone and find the middle way or maybe not be as vocal about my beliefs but because of Mirna I was forced to get out of my shell and really um, start to communicate what needed to be said which I guess you can say proves middle child syndrome because it took quite a lot of time for me to actually adapt I have seen that there are a lot of assumptions about gender identity. For example, men are taught to be more um, logical and systematic and women are more in tune with their emotions and sensitive. So Susan McHale said that having an older brother or sister can affect the development of gender identity and personality. McHale says that a boy with older sisters, older sisters for example, may be more likely to show traditionally feminine characteristics than a boy with older brothers. So this is nothing more but a stereotype, but it can become true. Now, my childhood with Anna taught me a lot about sibling rivalry and how to manage it, how to become my own unique self uh, despite everything. But my teenage years with Miruna taught me a lot about um, communication and um, what it means to be an extrovert. In having siblings, there will always be good parts and bad ones, but it's important to make the best out of it. Um, there is no doubt that we might have some difficulties along the way, but I believe that we have a lot to learn from our siblings, even though they are older or younger than us. Thanks for coming to my TED Talk.